If you're a YouTube creator, you probably heard that you need to post daily. And the more you post videos, the faster your channel will grow. Maybe there's some other implications about that that may or may not make your channel the healthiest. This guy has 2 billion views, 14 million subscribers across their family's channels. He's going to give you his insights and how that impacted their growth. Hey guys, my name is Tim Schmoyer. Welcome to Video Creators. We are here in this series on how they got to 1 million subscribers. We're talking with Sean McKnight from Cute Girl, Hair Cute Girl Hairstyles and Brooklyn and Bailey. Tim and us all behind the scenes tips, tricks, and tactics they use to get to way past a million subscribers on multiple channels. And one of the things that you talk about is don't get YouTube drunk. Don't get YouTube drunk. Uh, yeah. And you're talking from the creator perspective. From a creator for perspective. you guys, yep. what does that mean? Uh, it's well fairly easy. You look at the stats, you look at the views, you look at the subscribers, and the the rush of new subscribers or a spike in views leaves you wanting more and more. There's a dopamine, there's a gamification going in the head of if I if I can repeat that and do it again, or if I can create more content and keep that rising up and up. And before long, you've you're sacrificing your quality of life, you're sacrificing your family. Uh, friendships, relationships, or even your job. There are people who do this on the side and they have a full-time job and it starts creeping in on company time. And getting YouTube drunk is very easy to do. Happens all the time. You see it all across YouTube and you have to be mindful of it. At least the burnout. Yeah, the it burnout. Leads to yep. you no longer delivering any value Correct. for your audience. Yeah. Leads to quitting. Mm -hmm. It leads to a ton of therapy sessions, <laughs> which yeah. not, I mean, that's legitimately a thing like some of you guys should do. Like I've, I've done it. I'm, you know, it's important. Like it can lead to isolation because you start le yeah. living your life just for views, subscribers, mm -hmm. hearts and likes and Instagram or whatever. Like it becomes like you just can't put your phone away and be present with the people wh mm -hmm. who mean the most to you mm -hmm. because you're just like, how can I use this for content somehow? Exactly. Exactly. And you become so yeah, healthy. You invite people over for a party and they assume you're only doing it because you need content for your yeah. channel. Yeah. Yeah. Or people don't want to come over because they're going to put me on video. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. the problem. So what if though? someone got their channel to a sustainable place financially where they can gr build a team, 25 people around their channel, and they're at that pace where they could, without any human, what's the right word, like without any like impact on them personally, mm -hmm. do that. That's a different story. Okay. I and mean, you got the buzz feeds and the people that can put multiple up a day, yeah. and it does fairly well. You got a team, you got a budget behind it, uh, the audience comes to expect it. The audience will take what you give them, but you don't want to burn them out. But you have somebody like a BuzzFeed, their content is very well planned, very well thought out, very addictive in nature, so you want to keep watching. If you have that ability and those resources, it makes sense to, to upload okay. to more. I'm talking more of the personal ego side yeah. and what the demand on you and your personal time will affect you for a fake high. Yeah. Does that make sense? A temporary like, high. Yeah. It could last for a year even. It could. And once you believe that hype, like, you know what, I'm, I hit a million subscribers in this amount of time and I'm better than you and you and you and oh, I'm not going to collab with you because I'm better than you. It, the moment you start believing that, it, it, it's over. Like, even though the numbers may still be climbing, the authenticity starts to go away. Um, it's just like an addict, yeah. you know? They, be, they begin to destroy their lives when they're addicted. What impact do you feel like that has on the audience who's getting three, five, 10 videos a day from you on a channel versus like you guys once a week uh, in terms of fatigue or anything on their end? Like, is it still fine as long as it's the same, like Buzzfeed, same value every single time? Uh, or does that decline over time, do you think? And it's like the audience starts to get like, I can't watch 10 videos a day anymore. <laughs> well, I think it's more of a, if uh, somebody that you see that is YouTube drunk, meaning the success has come quickly, they don't know how to manage it or manage the expectations of it, but they believe they're become somewhat entitled to the fame and growth that they have. The audience has come to expect what they're getting from that person. And I, for a perfect example, I have a friend that had uh, three and a half million subscribers, was getting about 20 to 30 million views a month and was feeling burnout because they oh, were yeah. putting up a lot of content right. fairly regularly and mm -hmm. they just decided without telling their audience they were going to take a month off. And I told them like, you're really running a risk there because the audience has come to use, be used to that content. Yeah. And I understand that you are on burnout, but you can't like walk away like just that. She's like, they'll the be iPhone, fine. Something quick. Yeah, they'll be any kind of update would have been great, but it was silence, radio silence for a month. And when she came back, the numbers did not come back too. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, you have to be careful when you're on that trend to not be addicted to it to a point where you burn yourself out. Right. Uh, and then your audience will start to see it. 
this is so important. And I don't know how to convince you guys of this, but why you need to make money through what you're doing and not just through AdSense. Was, I'm not dogging AdSense. It's great. But there's a lot of other opportunities by forming a business model around the value that you're providing to your audience that can become a lot more lucrative, not just for the sake of building, of earning, making a lot of money, but so you can hire people yeah. who will, who will like, you know, my editor, Julia, Julia, say hi. <laughs> cut, Julia, you can cut yourself in there. <laughs> people like Julia, like edit these videos and they're producing content. And I have someone on my team who's 20 hours a week who just does my email. Sure. Right. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. like this would not be sustainable if you weren't making money that you could then use to Correct. provide for other people's families and to like, and to ultimately serve your audience better than you could if you're just like a one man Correct. show. Mm -hmm. So like if you guys really want to serve your audience and not get YouTube drunk, like have a business model around Correct. your content that lets you build a team so you can serve everyone better. Exactly. I have a whole playlist on this channel. It's all about helping you guys learn how to grow a team, how to hire and when that makes sense for you. You'll find that link down in the description below. But next we're going to talk about call to actions, which is what I just did. I called you to make an action. And the next action when you take is click that video you see on your screen to go and watch how that impacted their channel's growth over 1 million subscribers. We'll see you there. See ya.